Hi, you guys. Welcome, welcome back. My name is Carrie Penny. I am the Happy Crafty Homemaker, and welcome to Show and Tell number 224. So, um, interesting week. So, I told you guys last Tuesday when I filmed Thursday's video, so y'all saw it on Thursday, uh, I hadn't had any more injuries, and that is true. I still, I'm now two weeks injury-free. I am filming this today, Thursday, the whatever today is. Uh, it's after the 17th of, of May. That's all I can tell you. So the, the, no, actually I can tell you what today is. Tomorrow is the 24th. So today is the 23rd because tomorrow starts summer sock camp. So it's the 23rd of May. Um, so I'm still injury free two weeks later, but last Wednesday, I came down with a 48 hour bug again. Now I have not had a fever with the exception of getting vaccines since I had COVID in 2020. And <laughs> this has been very interesting because I was sitting there like Wednesday, I was just slogging through the day. I could not get going. I, my entire body just felt really, really slow. And then shortly after lunch, I just got the chills and I was like, okay, you know, I'm hurting, I'm achy. Maybe I overdid it in my workout or something because I had started trying to work out again last week. It's been like six weeks of being interrupted. It's like I'll get started and, you know, I'll get like three days into working out again every day and then something happens and I'm like five days out again. So I had worked out Sunday, Monday, Tuesday and I was like, okay, well, maybe, maybe that's what's wrong. Maybe I just overdid it. Maybe I overexerted myself a little I go into the bathroom and I'm like, I'm just going to do an Epsom salt soap. But I was like, you know, I've got really bad chills. Maybe I ought to go ahead and just take my temperature just to check. And my temperature was 101.5, which isn't like a super high fever or anything, but it's a noticeable fever. By the time, by the end of the day, I was at 102.5. So I was rub running a, an actual substantial fever at that point. Not like, oh my God, go to the doctor, but definitely a fever. And I had like a low grade tummy bug. The fever broke the next afternoon, I think. Cause it was still like at a hundred when I got up a hundred, 101 throughout the morning. So it might've been the next evening when it finally broke or it might've been the next morning when the fever officially broke. But anyway, No injuries. I didn't hurt myself, but I did end up getting sick. So it's like, and I wasn't around anybody. Like that's the kind of thing normally you catch in 24 hours or in, within 24 hours, you're symptomatic. I wasn't around anybody Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. So I'm not sure what happened. I was around people on Saturday but I wasn't around anybody between getting sick and Saturday. So I don't know what happened in that 72 hours, but that was something. So I kind of lost most of Wednesday afternoon and evening because I was, I had this headache. I had chills. I couldn't get comfortable. Every position like I would get into, I'd be comfortable for about 10 minutes and the pressure on my joints just was killing me. I mean, this was just the fever just wrecked my joints. So I'm still stiff. I'm still sore from that, but it's not like excruciating. It's just uncomfortable. You know, my normal, like I live with pain that's a level three to four on a daily basis. And then I was at like a level, you know, seven and a half, eight dealing with this. So anyway, it ran its course. I'm fine now. I, I got my energy back. I'm just a little stiff, but it's like, can I just normalcy, normalcy. And like I said, with that workout program, it's only 12 weeks, but for whatever reason, something happens every single time. I was in the last two weeks of that program when I got derailed. So I'm having to start all over again for a 12 week cycle that I would love to eventually get through. Anyway, um, I do have a lot of stuff in my basket. We have a video clip that's 12 minutes long that I'm going to insert in here at some point, uh, talking about, I, I, my week's been a little adventurous. So we had a surprise 
inspection with our uh, plumbing, electrical, and HVAC company. They do a whole home inspection and <laughs> surprise! So I kind of lost all day Tuesday this week to that, which wasn't a bad thing, but I did film like this little 12 minute clip because I didn't know what the rest of the week was going to turn out looking like because I knew yesterday was going to be a burn day. Monday was a burn day. So it's like, okay, I'm losing Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday this week already. I don't know what kind of time I'm going to have on Thursday, so I may as well go ahead and like try to get some things done. I do have a video uh, for Saturday. I think I'm going to have to kind of refilm it because some things have changed since I filmed the original video that was originally supposed to go up on Tuesday, but I didn't have a chance to edit because I had people in my house. So anyway, we will have a video on Saturday and we will have a video on Tuesday and we should have a video next Saturday as well. So. Things are moving around. Things are going. Things are happening. Anyway. So 12 minutes will be shoved into the end of this. So I really do have to like watch how long I'm... Plus I'm expecting another repair guy today. So... I need to watch my mouth. So finally... I don't know why it took me three months to finish these, but I have two hat and scarf sets from the Addy that are done. These were actually made in like February, March, but these did not get finished until this week. These are using Red Heart Soft, and this is like maize and soft teal or sea teal or something like that. I did have one loopy stitch that looped right there in the corner, but it should be fine. So I used the box closure on this one. This set is using Universal Yarn something stripes, and this is the Michigan themed one, which is Big Thursday or something. And this is a uh, Red Heart Super Saver in Soft Navy. And this one is just using a cinch top. So this one is actually fully rever reversible, whereas the uh, box bottom is not. And I did, so I took this, the, the universal yarn as far as I could, which means when you fold up the brim, you have some of the universal yarn and some of the soft down here on this side. So... I don't mind that. I think it's kind of a cute little detail, especially depending on which yarns you're using. But I want to use as much of the yarn as possible without creating waste. So we have two hat and scarf sets here. I did finish my Halloween socks. I still have not woven in my ends or taken off like my stitch markers and things. So these are a little bit taller than I normally make. They still fit perfectly under my calf muscle. But we do have finished socks. So that is my Halloween make. I'm still trying to get to the coasters. I haven't had time. If I don't get to the coasters, they may just be another prize for the Spookier Spring Make Along. I mean, who's going to complain with getting another prize? I mean, really? So anyway, those smack myself in the face. Those are finished. My other two that I showed you, the UFO socks. I'm about ready to start the toes on. So it'll probably actually be either tomorrow or Saturday when I complete the toes on those two pairs of socks. But that will be two UFOs done. And then I feel completely free to just start indulging in my cotton candy socks and my 80s socks, which you'll, I guess uh, I can go ahead and put that clip in now. Okay, dokie, you guys. So. I am already off to a widgety weird start this week. It is Tuesday morning at 8 a.m. And I'm not sure how filming is going to go this week. I'm not sure if we're just going to have a whole bunch of these put together with me in a sweatshirt going, hey, these are the, this is what happened this week. I don't know. Um, it, it's going to be weird. I'm not sure how it's going to work out, but we're going to roll with it. So I wanted to share my summer sock camp socks yarns that I have pulled with you guys. I am super duper, 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 mega excited about these. 
So I know this isn't that much. This is only one, two, three, four pairs of socks here. But we also have to remember I have my two UFO socks, pairs of socks, my, my Sport DK socks and my other pink socks, which are in the bag down here. Um, plus I have a wall full of yarn if I decide, you know, I can make more. But this is what I've initially pulled to work with. And I do also have an ALC yarn that I'm thinking about making socks with, but that just depends on where we get with this. So the theme is 80s, 90s for summer sock camp this year. And unintentionally, I did kind of stick with that pattern. Well, this one was a little bit intentional, but kind of stuck with the brights, the colorful, the little bit crazies. So this is, I'm going to cast this on July 1st. So we'll do Christmas in July with a Christmas set of socks. I thought that would be fun. So this is a Mary Maxim sock yarn. I think it's another like Simply Sock, but this is their festive feet. Happy holidays. I have, I bought, what was that, 2020 maybe? The Christmas sock pack for Mary Maxim. So I actually have the stripes. This is the one that has the little dashy bits in it. Now I did separate this into a 30 gram cake and a 70 gram cake. And I'm going to do heels, toes, and cuffs with this one. This is um, Knit Pick Stroll in Burgundy. No, Holly Jolly or Holly Berry. I don't want to lose all my center tags before I get socks started. So this will be my cast on for July 1st. This is Cascade Heritage Sock. This is still available, by the way, at Webs last time I checked, but it may be different by the time this goes up. This was on clearance, but I've had this in my stash for a little while now. And this is actually... Oh, it doesn't have the name on here. This is actually 80s something. So this will have a small stripe in pink, green, and aqua. And then it has a repeating stitch pattern that happens with this white and purple gray color. This is, here I am just pulling out all the center things anyway. Lion Brand Sock Feet in Cotton Candy. And this has shots of purple, lime green, and white, but it's primarily these pink colors. I did go ahead and cast on the toes just because the toes take me forever. Forever. And then I realized I messed up because I really wanted to do this sock pattern. And I was like, well, I can still do that toe up because the Pico cast on was irritating me. And then realized it's a drop stitch pattern and I really can't. So uh, these will either be vanilla socks. They'll be like my Halloween socks where I just do like a basic, you know, vanilla rib to them. There'll be 64 stitches instead of the original 60 for the pattern. Or they might become Hermione's Everyday Socks, which I still have not ever made a pair of. But I did, that's the other pattern I have sitting here is Hermione's Everyday Socks. And then this is a set from Yarnable. And actually, I might need to double check. Is this a Yarnable or is this a Hypnotic? No, this is a Hypnotic. So this is one I purchased separately on my own. And it has a sock sack that came with that yarn, and I'm not sure where I stuck it. So this is, I think, the mini that came with it. I have two pink minis that are hypnotic yarns. But this is Atomic. Oh, I just had that out. So it's actually like a 50-60s. This is Atomic Turquoise. Why are you not... So, tomorrow, I will probably keep working on this, to be honest. 
if I haven't, well, I'll finish my UFO socks. Then the next step, obviously, will probably be cotton candy. Then I'll probably go with this one. And that should get me through the month of June. Because in the month of June, I want to start my Southern Comforts Fiber Market sweater. As well as continue Project UFO. I also have a, a linen stitch shawl that I started that I kind of want to work on. So we have a lot going on in June. Then July 1st, hopefully I will be prepared to cast on this pair of socks. And then I could, in theory, grab one of the other Mary Max and Festive feet that I've got up there. I've got two other ones. One is like dark green, cream, and burgundy stripes. And one is like the bright red, bright green, bright white stripes, I think. And there might be a fourth one. But I could do two pairs of Christmas socks or maybe make Troy a pair of Christmas socks. He said he would consider wearing hand knit socks. He got a fresh scratching board and it's got fresh catnip all over it. It's part of why I get so distracted trying to work here. But yeah, so these will probably be June. I'll at least get started on these in June. This will be July for sure. And then this will move into August. But I think that's fair enough. I mean, that's one, two, three, four pairs in here plus the other two. So that would mean I could complete six pairs of socks this month or this summer during summer sock camp. I'm setting myself up to to make six pairs of socks during summer sock camp. Actually, you know what? This would be really cute in that picnic. No, because then you wouldn't see the thing. I might have to come up with a different thing to do the picnic socks with. It's actually written for Peyton's Croy, and I have, I think, four balls of the vineyard colorway of that, and it's so pretty. It's purples and greens. So, yeah, if I get bored, maybe I'll do that. But I'm enjoying the vanilla socks. I wear my vanilla socks a lot more. So, I, I'm not plus one way or the other as far as that goes. Plus, with doing the heel-toe cuff, it makes it visually interesting. But I do also have about 20 pairs of shorties that I've either purchased or have meant to make over the years. So, I could also just start cranking out some shorties. But uh, I don't make particularly long socks just because of the way I prefer things to fit. So, just so I don't have to bring this basket up when I do film, we can talk about these real quick, I suppose. So, these are the Sport DK Weight socks with the European yarn I can't remember the name of. Last week when you saw these, I was right here. And so far, I've done 10, 20, 30, five-ish rows, 36-ish rows. Again, that's where I ended up getting in a week with the other socks. Uh, so I'm actually getting very close to the toe on these, which is why I slowed down yesterday working on them. Um, I think I only need like maybe one or two more rows before we get to the toe. I was already past the heel. So I guess I probably had to measure the heel depth and then I'll know for sure. But I'm going to have to measure these and see where I am. I have not knitted anything on these this morning. I haven't sat down to have coffee until just now. And I figured while the house is still quiet this morning, I probably ought to do this because we're going to have um, a repair guy in here for a huge part of the day. So I'm not going to be able to film today like I have been on Tuesdays. Um, now these we we will talk about separately just because I can easily throw those in my basket of goodies. But these are my Halloween socks. I still need to weave it in my ends as of this Tuesday morning. This is my sock basket, my active sock basket. So these are, this is the black I was using for the heel toe cuff on these socks. Which I'm not sure I really did anything on after showing you last week. These are my mini maker bags from T-Doddles. 
I was subscribed to her monthly club. So I have a huge collection of these. I absolutely adore them and love them. And they're perfect. So we know I have had trouble working on these. Why? We're still trying to figure it out. It's not magic loop. It's not even working from two sides of the cake. I think, and this is going to sound crazy, excuse me, crazy. I think the problem may have been the project bag I had them in. Having them in the mini maker bowl, I have taken these in the car. I have worked on them here on the sofa. I've taken them back to the bedroom. I actually walked around Lowe's and Home Depot knitting socks. And I've had no issue, no frustration working on these socks. That's why I started the uh, cotton candy socks toe up on the same ball. I didn't split the cake for that at all. Uh, just because I don't need those socks to match. And I'm realizing like I'm having other than I did actually start the toes two at a time, which was a mistake. Normally I would knit the toe, then knit the other toe and then put them on a magic loop. Other than that, I've had zero issues working with that. Since I took these out of the project bag they were in, I've had no issue working on these. So I'm not sure, but I think the problem I've been having is the bag, not the project. I know this sounds ridiculous and ludicrous, but that appears to be what the problem has been. And no, I have not worked on these since last week. So we're, um, I think, one centimeter away from doing the toe on these. So I might have just slowed down a little bit because we were getting so close to the toe needing to be put in and I need to actually like sit down and think about it. So anyway, that is where we are on the sock updates. That is where we are on future cast ons for summer sock camp. I am going to sit down for a few minutes. I've been cleaning for the last two hours, getting everything done for the day that has to be done. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a break here. I've got about 45 minutes until the window for my repair guy to get here. So I'm going to work on something, one of these projects that's surrounding me. <laughs> Probably do 10 rounds on socks just because we're still in stocking at such here. But anyway, I love you guys and I will see y'all real soon. So now I will do my best to not mention socks again, right? Correct. Uh, before we move on to whips and my one acquisition package, um, Zen Yarn Gardens still has some yarn left. So if you were interested in looking at their sets and stuff, they do still have some sets up on their website. 50% off, they are retiring, which I still say, like, it just breaks my heart. There are so many beautiful dyers out there. I understand, but this is a dyer I've bought from before. And I generally could find it like LYS's when I was traveling. So it is very sad for me to see them no longer in business. Just saying. Um, so this is a funny one. This this should have been at the beginning of the video. Uh, <laughs> I haven't changed my hair color, you guys. I'm just going gray. So it started with like a couple comments coming in, you know, every three or four videos about six months ago. About the time we were moving. Or as we were moving into the house. But, uh... I haven't dyed my hair since 2020 when I bleached it. Um, we, I did my hair in, I had my hair bleached in March 2020 and I had the lavender highlights put in it by Jessica. I drove down here after we had moved to Charlotte, had Jessica cut off all the length and I went back to like chin to shoulder length hair. Uh, she bleached it, put in lavender highlights. And then in Charlotte, I had it re-bleached, touch up bleach in like September of 2020, maybe October, maybe. Uh, I haven't touched my hair color since then. The uh, ashiness you guys are seeing, it literally is just where I'm going gray. Um, that 
that's just my gray hair. <laughs> it started with the streak, which was cute, but uh, yeah, I'm starting to get, I'm about 20% gray now. So that's what you're seeing. It's not, I haven't dyed my hair, uh, but recently I'm getting more comments on my hair color and asking if I'd had it dyed, what she was using. Um, no, that's just me going gray. I'm using the exact same purple rinse I used when I had my hair bleached. I'm using the same wash and conditioner I've been using. I do use, a, on the days that I get into the pool, I do use a leave-in conditioner to kind of prevent the ends from getting a little crusty and dried out from the salt. But other than that, I haven't changed anything about my hair care since 2020. I just wanted to, I guess this is probably a more appropriate time because if you're still watching, you're a regular viewer and you're kind of interested in the weird like things that pop out of my mouth. But yeah, that's, that's what you're seeing. The ashiness is just, just me going cray. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Sarah. And just a reminder, I'll be 41 this year. So it, it, this is what happens in your 40s as you go gray. <laughs> We're used to seeing everybody with dyed hair, so it's a little weird to think of somebody in their 40s as being 20% gray at 41. It is a little overwhelming. Like, I'm just saying, from my end, it is just a little overwhelming. But anyway whips. I do have some fun whips. Well, one you already know about. One is, so I had to change gears when I was filming my linen stitch shawl tutorial, which I will leave here and here. But, um, cause I really wanted to use this yarn. So this is denim in color. And these are left over from that Sorella sweater that I crocheted a couple years ago. This is taupe, and this is pink, right? Yes, pink. So we have taupe and pink, and these are heathered. They're a very, very heavy four. And I love the yarn. It's absolutely beautiful. It's a 50% cotton, 50% acrylic blend. I got these for $1.24 on sale at the Hobby Lobby clearance a while back. Really have enjoyed working with this, but this is the last of what I have. And I really wanted to do the linen stitch shawl with this, but for the tutorial, the, the ever so slight marling in this made it to where you could not see the stitches. The stitch definition just did not show up. So... I did still want the shawl done with this. So I'm going to do it like I did the green and pink one, I think, where I do the three stripes of the pink. But very excited. Or three. Now I forgot what color. Oh, that must have been pink with green stripes. So three green stripes. This will have three pink stripes with the taupe. So I have four taupes and one and a half pinks left. And I've got those right now in this Ikea box just because I had it on hand and that's what I took downstairs in. But that is right now one of the give my hands a break from making socks. <laughs> uh, I've been doing a lot of knitting. I did jam myself under the fingernail here and I'll occasionally catch it with my knitting needle. And when I start catching it, I know it's just time to like go crochet something for a little while. And now that I'm done with that big king size blanket, I don't have something else that I'm actively working on on the side. So I thought, you know, I'll go ahead and do the shawl because I pulled it off the yarn wall and I was like, I'll just work on that. Um, last whip and then we'll get into my one acquisition. My Fresh Berries Tea. I will leave a link in the description box down below. This is using the Friends Cotton Silk Blend. I thought I had a label stuck to this when I shoved it in my... Oh, there it is. Friends Cotton Silk Print from Hobie. This is color number three. I think I'm on my fourth ball now. I think I just added in my fourth ball. 
when y'all saw this last week, I had not split for the sleeves yet. So I was right here. I have now split for the sleeves and worked a little over six inches under the underarm. So now I'm at the point where I'm just knitting in the round. I just hit here. So I am going to take about 10 stitches out. I'm going to decrease about 10 stitches so we maintain a uniform ease, positive ease throughout the entire garment. Um, as I've told y'all before, I from the front, I, I'm a rather extreme hourglass shape. So if I wear something that doesn't have any cling to it, if it just hangs straight off my bust, it tends to make me look larger. And my goal is to not look larger. So I'm very broad built. And the last thing I need to do is add width to how wide I look. So I am going to taper in for the waistline and then I'll put those 10 stitches back in to come in for the hips. The pattern calls for it for my size to be 12 and a half inches of straight stockinette and then two and a half inches of ribbing at the bottom. So that will be hitting right under the pelvic flare, right above like right in the hip joint area, I think. I think that's right. So I'll have plenty of room to be able to put those 10 stitches back in before we hit the banding at the bottom. But I don't want to take the decreasing too quickly. I need to do like five knit two rows and then take out another five stitches. And that should be enough, I think. Or I might do four two rows, four two rows, four two rows and just take out 12 stitches overall but I want to maintain that shape as we come through the waistline I did a very similar thing to the brick sweater that I still need to put the sleeves in where I just created a taper at the waistline and then reflared it for the hips very easy things you can do to get a more flattering fit if something has a very boxy shape and you do have from the front a very obvious transition from waist, bust, and hip. Uh, you also, you know, if you're bustier on top but thinner on the bottom, you can taper those stitches and maintain the tapered depth there. If you are hippier than you are bustier, you know, you can cast on a smaller size here and then follow the shape of where your body increases along the hip line if you're more pear shaped. If you're more apple shaped, you can, you know, do a more narrow shoulder. You don't have to do the full increases for the shoulder and create the body shape to come around for an apple. I know people think there's a preference for body type. There's, there's ideal body types other than your health there really isn't. It's how we drape clothes on ourselves to be flattering. And one of the advantages to knitting and crocheting tops is we can customize that to our shapes. So that's one of the reasons why I spend a lot of time talking about how I'm altering these to fit my shape. I was very lucky the extra large in this fit perfectly at the collar. It's, it's, it is a higher collar shirt than I would normally wear. I do prefer open collars just because I don't like anything around my throat. This does hit about right here though. And the arm measurements, the arm hole measurements just happen to fit me perfectly. But there have been a number of times where I didn't want to increase the body size, but I needed to increase the arm size or I needed to add a couple extra stitches on the bottom of something. So I, I bound off more for the body so I could add an extra in for the armhole. You can alter these patterns to fit your shape. But I love how this is working out. I do have, the only thing I'm worried about is because this is a one stitch raglan here, I do have slight puckering. Uh, it's not bad, I think, once it blocks out, because this is a, this appears a lot tighter, unblocked. I think it's going to be fine. But I did make significant progress on this just because it was easy, mindless knitting. 
I am playing with a couple of different ways to weave in my ends on this. So I have been using the Russian join, but then adding in a knit as you go for the tail because of the nature of cotton. It's just so slippery. It's the fibers don't mesh at all. They don't grip it all to themselves. So I really want to make sure my ends don't fall out there. And with the Russian join, I don't want to have little tips, tufts of cotton stick out either just in case this come through to the front. So I am using a combined method there. I do have cables on my armholes and I do have a 50 inch cable that I'm using to try on the sweater as I go. So if I get bored just knitting in the round, I also can just put in the sleeves, which I've done mid sweater before. That's no big deal. Um, we're going to have a, a if not a full video, a short coming back to the wool genie. That will happen in the next week or two. Because So I have a purchase. I got five Summer Sock Button Camp badges to go on my project bags that I've got my Summer Sock yarn or Summer Sock Camp stuff going on. And I did go ahead and get a sticker. Now, I don't know where I'm going to put my sticker, but I did get a sticker. <laughs> I love stickers, but I don't know where to put them. Um, it breaks my heart to stick them on anything. I was about to say mine said evenly cut, but it's not. Um, but yes, that's my one purchase. I've been very, very good at not making purchases, but I do have the Summer Sock Camp button badges. Uh... Sunny, if you see this, let me know if you wanted one. I'll, I'll send you one because they, they only came in a five pack. So I ended up with five of them. Uh, but I, I am planning on, I will need two or three of these and then I'll have two extras. So maybe they'll make their way in a Spooky Spring Make Along giveaway prize. I don't know. If somebody else is planning on making socks, one lady is making Batty Bat socks. Y'all need to come check out the Facebook group. There's a link in the description box down below. If you want to join the Facebook group, make sure you answer all the questions. I'm very particular about you answering the questions. But the projects are so much. There's a lady designing a dress. There's a pair of bat socks that are awesome sauce. Um... We've got yarn that's dyed and that's been dyed in spooky themes. We've got bags. We've got a quilted pillow top. Come check it out. Come check it out, you guys. It's so much fun. I love the spooky projects. Personally. So anyway. Saturday we'll have a video for sure. Tuesday, 99.9% .9 sure we'll have a video. Thursday, I'll see you for the next. One of these show and tells. Then the following Saturday, I'm 97% sure we have a video for. I'm very excited if you can't tell. So anyway, I love you guys. I'll see y'all soon. Please take care of yourselves.